good morning participants uh, so today we have uh, uh, fourth day and uh, in this uh, second session we have dr uh, bj shah with us uh, actually uh, i have done my phd under sasar itself uh, so uh, he is my guru and uh, i am sure that this session is very much helpful will be very much helpful to you uh, i'll introduce sir that uh, sir is working as a principal in a government engineering college modasa gujarat uh, sir has taught various subjects uh, related to structural engineering as, at uh, graduation as well as post graduation level also sir has uh, guided number of uh, pg dissertations me dissertations and uh, including myself uh, sir has guided more than 5 phd scholars uh, sir is involved in various activities related to research and development work various consultancy projects in the area of analysis and design of structures uh, third party checking and design of drawings as well as the projects related to structural health monitoring and field testing uh, uh, sir is the part of uh, the administrative body of the government of gujarat in many of the committees and uh, uh, even uh, sir is the member of various policy matter committees in the state technical education as well as gujarat technical uh, university so sir we i welcome you in this session on behalf of marwadi education foundation as well as atal academy aict uh, and uh, sir i with this i hand over the session to you yeah. thank you uh, thank you dr tarak for these kind words uh, and uh, with this thing uh, i think uh, the first sessions uh, you have got a lot of energy yes sir. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> Uh, related to uh, this meditation and yoga yes so i hope that you have got a lot of energy and uh, this energy uh, we are going to use it uh, uh, now in this session as such uh, earthquake engineering uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, when the earth uh, tremors earth shake lot of energy is released and now it's a um, uh, thing that this energy entered into the structures and if the structure is uh, capable enough then uh, it would survive if the structure is uh, not capable enough then it is going to uh, collapse or fail so we have to uh, use the effective use of this energy because energy is going to transfer from earth to the structures and so that how best we can utilize this energy based on that uh, the performance of the structures would be there so uh, with this thing uh, with this not uh, uh, we start uh, the today's morning uh, good morning to all the participants and uh, we start the today's sessions on the seismic design of bridges uh, as uh, all of you know that uh, like building bridge also a one of the very important uh, uh, structures uh, for uh, the uh, economy of any country because uh, transportation sectors as we know uh, uh, that is a very essential uh, part of our all the services and that is why wherever there is any obstacles in these transportation systems we need to uh, pass over these obstacles by constructing the bridges so bridge bridges are one of the very very important uh, structures uh, as far as the civil engineering uh, civil engineering is concerned so i will start with uh, how to go with uh, making the uh, earthquake resistant bridges so these are the uh, topic of the today's and uh, i will first of all share my screen and then after we can start with the presentations so uh, in this uh, screen uh, let us have uh, this presentation uh,
okay the presentation is visible is it visible to everyone uh, it is just getting loaded sir good morning sir sir yeah uh yes sir now uh, it is visible okay yeah. okay good morning professor ankur namaskar sir good morning yeah, namaskar. namaskar yeah so uh, let us start with uh, uh, the today's morning uh, with the session of uh, uh, earthquake resistant design of the bridges so as we know that uh, the bridges are important from the many perspective uh, we have the different uh, perspective from the people's life uh, maybe social education employment entertainment from the economic point of view uh, transportation logistic which is one of the major uh, stake uh, for the countries from the politics point of view government security so many perspectives are of course i have listed here few of them but many perspectives are there for uh, the bridges let us have some of the look of uh, the economics of the road sectors that will just get the idea that uh, uh, why we should go for uh, the seismic design of the bridges or the earthquake resistant design of the bridges india has one of the largest uh, network uh, road network in the world spanning a total 5.6 million kilometer this road network transport more than 60% of the goods in the country and 85% of the india's total passenger traffic the construction of the highway reached to 122000 kilometer during financial year 2017 to 18 which was constructed at an average of 28 kilometer per day as of uh, april 2018 there were about 1529 ppp projects in the india out of which 740 were related to the roads project awarded under the bot built that is built operate and transfer is 17.92 percentage of the total awarded project as of april 2018 government permitted 100% fdi foreign direct investment in the road sector several foreign companies have co formed a partnership with the indian players to capitalize on the sector's growth government initiative so central road fund amendment bill 2017 has been passed by the lok sabha which would result in revenue of rupees 2300 crore for the national waterway in the country this is also another areas Uh, that is explored in the countries in the last year, uh, couple of years. That is the national waterways. Government has identified certain uh, uh, national waterways, uh, and uh, it is um, uh, decided to uh, uh, just uh, create some waterways. The Ministry of Surface Transport plan to implement value engineering programs in order to promote use of new technologies and the material in highway projects being executed in the India. in the april 2018 the government of india signed a 210 uh, million us dollar deal with the world bank to improve the rural road at a stretch of 10500 km under the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana in may 2018 the government of india has signed 500 million us dollar loan agreement with the world bank to provide additional funding for construction of 7000 km climate resi resilient road out of which 300 3500 km will be built using the green technology under pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana in may 2018 the government of india approved a construction of 9.9 km six lane bridge project across ganga in uttar pradesh on national highway 36 with the total capital cost of about 1900 crores what is road ahead the government of india 
plan to develop a total of 66,170 kilometer of road under the different programs such as the uh, NHDP, Special Accelerated Road Development Program in the Northeast region and left-wing extremism. The government has identified development of, uh, development of 2,000 kilometer of coastal roads to improve the connectivity between ports in the remote villages. The NHAI, National Highway Authority of India, planned to, to build a 50,000 kilometer roads worth rupees 250 US billion dollar by 2020 as a part of long-term goal of doubling the length of National Highway Network to about two lakhs kilometer by 2020, the doubling the National Highway, that is two lakhs kilometers. Government of India spends about rupees one lakh crore during the financial year 18 to 20 to build roads in the country under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yodhna. Government of India has decided to invest rupees 7 trillion uh, for the construction of the new roads and the highway over the next five years. So I think all these things uh, from the uh, economics of the road sector, government initiative and road ahead, we can see that a large amount of fund is going to be invested in this sector. And that is why it is necessary to make, uh, to build the bridges, whatever, because when we are talking about the roads uh, along the entire stretch, there will be a lot of obstacles and wherever there is obstacles, we need to pass these obstacles by providing bridges, culvert, bridge. So these are the different alternatives to cross the uh, obstacles. So that is why large amount of fund, you, have, uh, you can see that um, it is to be invested in this area. We need to take a more care, more precautions to build the earthquake resistant design of bridges. Right? So in this presentation, I will talk uh, initial part somewhat about the introduction and component of the bridges because bridges little bit of the different types of the structures as compared to the building. So that is why I will talk a little bit of uh, uh, its introduction. And then after we will see the performance of bridges in the past earthquake. This is one of the very important part because the past earthquakes are always the lesson for us, how the failures are going to take place. So we can take care of, we can study, we can analyze this failure. And then after we can uh, see that how the failures can be prevented so this is one of the important lesson for us. Every earthquake gives us a lessons of the failure and uh, 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 researchers and people try to find out the way to prevent this kind of a failures. I have taken the three major uh, earthquake which is going to take place because uh, during this three earthquake, I think majority of the uh, weaknesses, uh, whatever is there in the bridges are to be, fire, uh, to be uh, come across and uh, that will help us a lessons for us to understand that what kind of features that has to be incorporated into the design of the bridges, into the bridges so that the bridges becomes a earthquake resistant bridges. Kobe uh, 1995 earthquake gives a lot of lessons. 2001 Guj earthquake that is also gives a lot of lessons to us and China 2008 because China, as we know, that uh, has made a remarkable progress as far as the civil engineering, civil engineering is concerned. And uh, uh, 2008 China earthquake has also given us a lot of lessons. Of course, uh, it is also a some of uh, uh, the test uh, that is being made, experiment which is made in the past uh, that is being tested uh, in the China, practiced in the China and how uh, these experiments were um, uh, actually proved during the earthquake. So the, that, this is also a test case because China is also, uh, uh, as far as the population is concerned, the world largest population is there. Um, uh, and that is why uh, we can get a, a lessons from the China earthquake because we are also next in the population category and um, uh, we need a, a lot of uh, infrastructures uh, to be developed. So that is why this, uh, of course, there were uh, many earthquakes but these three earthquake gives a lot of lessons to us uh, to go for uh, various features that can be incorporated as uh, into a design of the bridges. We will also discuss about some of the codal provision for the seismic design of the bridges and uh, some good practices uh, that we need to incorporate as far as the seismic considerations are concerned. 
So these uh, entire my presentations would cover these five different uh, aspect and which we will see one by one into a detail. So let us see, first of all, uh, um, the classification of the bridges. There are various ways to classify the bridges from the different point of uh, different perspective as per the functions, as per the material of constructions of the superstructures, the form of the superstructures, interspan relationships, or relative positions of the road level uh, to the high flood level, length of the bridges, and anticipated type of the services and the duration of the bridges. We will see its pictures, so I think pictures will give you a more clarity as far as all these things are concerned. According to the functions, um, it will be uh, known as uh, aqueduct uh, that may be on canal or rivers, viaduct that may be there on the road, rail, or, or over a valley, pedestrian bridges, highway bridges, uh, rail bridges, railway bridges, road bridges, uh, rail come roadway bridges. So these all the pictures uh, uh, will give you the uh, ideas. So wherever it is passing from uh, over the canals or the rivers, uh, so canal or river bridges, uh, railway bridges when basically the railway is going to pass, pedestrian bridges for specific purpose, highway bridges, river bridges. Uh, this is uh, the highway bridges, uh, this is the river bridges or the rail over bridges. So different names are used, but ultimately the function is to just cross the obstacles. And according to the material of the construction of uh, superstructures, it may be earlier the timbers were widely used, but uh, slowly and gradually these timbers were replaced to a steel. And then after, uh, as uh, uh, we evolved, uh, we uh, we were uh, you go we have gone for the reinforced co concrete bridges, in which again the reinforced concrete bridges, pre concrete bridges, composite bridges. So these are the different materials, and based on which it is known as a steel bridges or RCC bridges or the PSA bridges or the composite bridges or the machinery bridges. So these are the uh, different kinds of the bridges uh, as far as the material of construction is concerned. As far as the form of the superstructures, this is very essential as the, in the design. What kind of the superstructures are, we are going to use it or we are going to propose. So based on that, if there is only slab, it is known as a slab bridges. Uh, then slab and beam may be also there. So slab and beam type bridges, sometimes it is known as a T-girder kind of a bridges. When the steel truss is used, it is known as a truss bridge. When arch is used, uh, so it is known as an arch bridge. And uh, these are uh, some of the uh, specific type of uh, the things. So uh, this is uh, uh, known as um, the... So uh, this is uh, the arch bridge, uh, truss bridge, cable stay bridges. So different types of uh, uh, the bridges are there. So accordingly, uh, we will use, uh, it depends on the type of the superstructures. So specifically this cable stay bridge, suspension bridge, arch bridge, these are aesthetically looks uh, very beautiful things. And uh, many times it is also, uh, uh, considered to be a signature, uh, it is known as a signature bridges. So, depends on the interspan relationship, uh, it may be a simply supported. Most of the time uh, we have seen that the uh, bridges are to be a simply supported bridges. But uh, nowadays uh, uh, the trend is started to make a continuous bridges. So two or three span of a continuity is being used, uh, then uh, balance cantilever bridges. So these are the uh, different kinds of the bridges. Of course, um, sometimes you may not be uh, known, uh, may not be visible, but uh, continuity is being involved, it is to be used. As we know that the continuous super uh, structures are always um, uh, more, uh, uh, what we can say this, uh, uh, give you uh, the lesser amount of moment and uh, more of rigidity in comparison to the simply supported bridges. So redundant structures are always advantages because uh, uh, it gives a more um, uh, rigidity to the structures. Then according to the classification, high level bridges, low level bridges, submers submersible bridges. So it depends on the cost effectiveness, uh, economics, uh, uh, sometimes we can go for the low level or the submersible bridges. 
according to the length of uh, bridges this is uh, one of the important concept uh, thing because uh, in the designing uh, we are always uh, prefer this criteria when the span is less than 6 meter known as a culvert 6 to 60 meter known as a minor bridges and uh, span is more than 60 meter it will be a major bridges lot of things uh, uh, are to be there uh, all the codal provisions many specifications are related to uh, this uh, criteria because uh, as the length of the bridge is increasing, uh, increasing uh, all the troubles or complexities, challenges are to be there to make uh, the stable and the uh, safe bridges. So this is one of the major concern in the design and accordingly the uh, bridges are known as minor, major or the culvert. Uh, depends on the anticipated types of the services and duration of the use. It may be a permanent bridge, temporary bridges, uh, military bridges because Nowadays, uh, it is also um, uh, a very challenging task uh, from the defense point of view. As we know that right now we have a confrontations with the China, with the Pakistan, and on our peripheral countries. So such kind of uh, temporary bridges have also an important thing. Uh, just to uh, use by the defense people, uh, many times these kind of uh, temporary bridges are also to be used. So this is also a important thing if you have a chance to work with the border road organizations uh, or the defense sector, such kind of a temporary bridges are the uh, need of uh, uh, such kind of a sections. So uh, let us have uh, after classification, the component, uh, basically uh, in the bridges, uh, the important part is uh, on the superstructures because which is directly receives the load. The vehicles uh, will pass through this uh, uh, thing. So that is why uh, this is the uh, superstructures, uh, which is receiving the uh, loads. Then uh, substructures, which uh, support the superstructures. So uh, this is uh, 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 the vertical, basically most of the time it is a vertical elements, just like as a column in the buildings uh, on which the superstructure is resting. And uh, in between superstructures and substructures, there are a certain elements uh, known as a bearing. Because a very high uh, amount of forces are going to transfer, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, going to transfer, and uh, that is why we need to take care in, on, in a very small area. Very high amount of load is going to transfer from super structures to substructures, and that is why this uh, bearing uh, uh, plays an important role. And the function of uh, the bridges is also depends on this bearing how the bearing performs if the bearing um, uh, just uh, um, failed or it does not perform the functions, ultimately it will affect on the superstructures and substructures. There is a burden on the superstructure and substructure. So that is why bearing, of course, it's a very small part of it, but it's a very important part in the bridges. And last part is the foundation on which it is going to rest. So basically it has the four components, superstructures, bearings, substructures, and the foundations. Superstructures, uh, again, there are a wide varieties in the superstructures. Uh, depends on the uh, span requirement, uh, what kind of the span you are having. Based on that, the superstructures uh, have a lot many variations are there. So uh, there is, is a, a superstructures, uh, uh, this is known as a slab type of superstructures. Uh, it is just like as a slab which is provided in the building. Uh, there may be one a variable thickness or there may be a uniform thickness. There may be a voids, uh, maybe uh, inserted into uh, the slabs and it is also known as a voided slab just to increase the moment uh, uh, of resistance capacity uh, by increasing the depth of the section, we can um, increase the moment of resistance and uh, the weight of the sections can be reduced. So it is known as a voided uh, kind of a slab. These are the standard um, uh, uh, bridges are uh, standard sections are available. So you can use the standard sections, prefabricated sections that can be used. Concrete, this is one of the very uh, common type of the superstructures you find in most of the bridges known as a slab and beam type of superstructures, right? So in the reinforced concrete bridges, uh, this is one of the very common type and this is known as a T-beam type of a superstructures. Composite, sometimes uh, you also found a composite, uh, basically railway um, uh, bridges, you find such kind of a things. So 
girders are nothing but the plate girders so these are the plate girders over which the slab is to be placed uh, then this is a box uh, type of a superstructures again uh, when you have a wide uh, span is larger at that time or uh, there is a skew a skewness when there is a curvature so at that time such kind of a box type cellular type of superstructures are used and again this is a composite uh, uh, structures so we found a wide variations as far as these superstructures are concerned depends on the span arrangement span requirement what are the span requirements so these uh, are more or less uh, uh, people have done a lot of uh, uh, what a uh, uh, lot of work uh, regarding suitabilities of the different types of the superstructures in the different span range and based on this literature or based on the work which is carried out by this uh, by the researchers these are some of the things which are established and you found you can find uh, in uh, many of uh, uh, the literatures so uh, we have uh, uh, up to 10 meter span uh, the rcc solid slab type of superstructure is preferable in 10 to 20 meter range uh, rcc multi girder uh, slab system is suitable 20 to 30 meter uh, psc girder or box type superstructure is suitable 30 to 40 meter psc box type and psc t girder kind of superstructure is suitable a 40 to 50 meter psc box type of superstructure is suitable and uh, uh, 50 meter onwards uh, uh, it will be considered as a long span bridges and uh, in a long span bridges there are various options available so people has to uh, just see the cost uh, uh, effectiveness of the different types of the superstructures and one can decide uh, where there are uh, many uh, solutions you may go for a truss bridge you may go for a suspension bridge you may go for a cable stay bridge you may go for a bow string girder kind of a bridge you may go for a extra dose bridge so many options are available beyond 50 uh, meter span so where the people has to think of uh, uh, the suitability uh, and the cost effectiveness and based on that one can decide so these are the different options available uh, for the selection of the superstructures and which is one of the very, very important uh, uh, task for the selection of the superstructures for the designer. Accordingly, the seismic designs and all the parameters are also going to affect. So we have uh, uh, the uh, different pictures of the superstructures just to have the idea. This is a slab type superstructures, only slab. Uh, of course, uh, uh, here uh, the thick, uh, quite thicker slabs are provided in comparison to the building. In building, five inch or six inch slab is provided, but here uh, this five inch and six inch would not work. Here it may be in terms of uh, 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 800 mm, uh, 750 mm, 100, 1000 mm. So such kind of a thickness, uh, nearly one meter thickness of the slabs are uh, the requirement uh, for a span of 10 meter or so. So this is a voided type of a superstructures when there is a requirement of uh, uh, when there is a headroom. Here uh, we can say this is a headroom. So when there is a restrictions in the headroom, so at that time one can also think of such kind of a voided type of superstructures which has <coughs> a larger moment of inertia in comparison to the solid slab. And at the same time the voids are to be inserted so the weight of the structures can be reduced. And if the weight of the weight of the structure will be reduced, so dead weight will be reduced. So moment requirement to the demand uh, is also going to be reduced, right? So this is also a very suitable solutions when there is a restriction in the headroom. PSC multi girder system is a most common and popular type of a superstructure used in majority of the bridges where the girders are provided. So you can see these are the diff different girders. Again, the number of girders depends on how many lanes you want to accommodate whether the bridge is of a single lane bridge or two lane bridge or multi lane. So now how many numbers of uh, lanes are to be accommodated? Accordingly, one can decide the number of girders. And right? so this is to be there. And this is a PSC girder. Of course, uh, as far as the look is concerned, you will be not uh, differentiate whether it is RCC or PSC girder. But uh, uh, in a PSC girders, the uh, priestess uh, strands are uh, to be placed. And then after it is to be um, uh, just uh, keep it um, uh, oh, uh, from the end, uh, the uh, pre-stress wires are going to be stressed and then after it is going to be uh, completed, closed. 
so that is why um, uh, while construction uh, you might be identified but after completion of course some of the things are there such kind of a blisters are also to be provided so just by a look uh, you can identify uh, in this way the major advantage of using a blister bridge in comparison to the rcc bridge is that you can go for a lesser depth right so uh, depth can be reduced and that is why blister uh, is advantageous so we are introducing a uh, uh, what we can say the compressive stresses and that is why the moment of resistance of the sections is increased now this is the box type of superstructures and this is the balanced cantilever kind of a superstructures depends on the span requirement you can select cable stay is always uh, known as a signature bridges and uh, aesthetically also it looks beautiful so when the, there is a large span uh, uh, so uh, maybe in uh, more than even uh, uh, 80 meter 100 meters then this kind of uh, the bridges is the solution here uh, the load uh, actually the load transfer mechanism is the important thing normally what thing is there from superstructures it will transfer to the substructures but here the load will load of the superstructures will be transferred to the substructures through these cables so these cables are provided which will basically uh, carry the loads of the superstructures and then transfer to this vertical pylon and from the pylon it will transfer to the substructures so load transfer mechanism here uh, we need to understand and uh, here it is comparatively a large span so the flexibility of the bridges would be more so these kind of a bridges are little, uh, somewhat of more flexible in comparison to the girder bridges so that is why uh, during the analysis also one has to be very careful uh, and many times we need to go for even a non linear analysis also because these uh, are have uh, more flexible in the nature so uh, 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 the nature induced forces like a wind force Uh, may sometimes create uh, or may sometimes found to be governing in the design in comparison to the earthquake forces so uh, this is there similarly bow string bridges <coughs> here also the same things are there the load transfer mechanism so the load of the superstructures will transferred first of all will take by this uh, uh, what we can say the uh, strands right uh, uh, so these are the uh, maybe sometimes the pre uh, Uh, steel strands or the pre-stress uh, uh, anchors are there, and through these anchors, it will transfer on this arc, and from the arc, it will transfer to the substructures. So, load transfer mechanism is important for such kind of a bridges, and one needs one needs to understand uh, the things. Second important thing is a construction stage analysis. Most of the time, we are not quite aware, uh, uh, worried about the construction stage analysis in the building. but here in the bridges one has to also take care of the construction stage analysis because uh, when you move from one stage to the another stage and when you are using a uh, pre stress kind of a structures so at that time there would be a losses time dependent losses and um, uh, 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 the period of the construction is also a large in comparison to the things so that is why construction stage analysis is also becomes important uh, for the stability and the safety of the structures second important uh, element of the bridge uh, bridges is the bearing bearings will transfer the loads from to superstructure and very small area is there so that is why there is a possibility of the stress concentration and uh, we have to transfer the loads very effectively so various kinds of the bearings these are widely used known as a metallic bearing elastomeric bearing a uh, pot ptfe bearing Uh, this uh, kind of a uh, uh, material as far as the material is concerned this type of a uh, bearings are widely used uh, then after uh, depends on what kind of a boundary condition you uh, you are going to use it based on that fixed bearing free bearing guided bearing such kind of a uh, bearings are also required to be used so that uh, the uh, uh, secondary stresses which are going to develop this can be minimized so this uh, are the uh, pictures of some of the bearings which are widely used uh, so this is a pot uh, uh, there is a pot uh, fixed bearing uh, spherical bearings are also to be used elastomeric bearings are also to be there the neoprene rubbers are to be uh, just sandwiched between the steel plates and uh, these kind of a uh, bearings were also used in majority of the bridges 
so this bearings provides uh, what can say the flexibility and uh, allow a deformations to some extent so based on uh, uh, that what amount of deformations you are going to allow uh, you can uh, go further uh, bearings so bearing design of course um, uh, uh, it is uh, not to be made but uh, it is a mechanical component but while uh, getting this bearing you need to give a various design parameter like what amount of loads are going to transfer in the vertical direction in the lateral directions what amount of deformations you are going to allow so all these design parameters which you are considering in the design that needs to be given to the suppliers uh, when uh, and accordingly the manufacturer will prepare the bearings and uh, that will uh, be placed uh, just to ensure the desired performance of the bridges so this is a, a very important part uh, of uh, the bridges and one has to careful otherwise from the very first day if the bearing will not functions then the, your bridge is um, malfunctioning this so again there are wide variation as far as the substructure is concerned and uh, here the shapes are also many times important so <laughs> this is a very traditional kind of the piers or the abutments uh, which are to be used in the older bridges but nowadays uh, you found a very new shapes so these are uh, uh, the uh, kind of a uh, uh, pier or the abutment which is provided this is also a hollow uh, or the frame type of a pier so this is uh, the things the main thing is that at the top you need to provide a larger width because of to accommodate the uh, superstructures properly you need a larger dimension at the top and uh, of course uh, sometimes where you find out a uniform depth throughout or sometimes the depth can be reduced so this is just the reverse of the thing because <laughs> normally in building or so as the load travel travels towards the bottom or downward side we increasing uh, when we move downward we increasing the uh, cross sectional dimension whereas here you can see it is reverse of the thing it is just to accommodate the number of lanes which are going to put it here we need a larger dimension here so <coughs> that is why uh, uh, you can see in most of the shapes the larger dimensions are to be kept at the top and uh, um, uh, when we move downward it is reducing so various shapes are there uh, accordingly you can see this is also you can see that uh, uh, the uh, cap and then after the uh, piers or the abutments that is to be placed here so wide variation you will found in the substructures and accordingly it can be designed these are the some of the uh, other ancillary elements uh, of uh, substructures there is a wing wall return wall so this is to be provided um, uh, well, just uh, adjacent uh, to the uh, so uh, superstructures uh, substructures so the wing wall is uh, also sometimes uh, the pcc or rcc kind of uh, things are to be used maybe a cantilever counterpart so these are the ancillary elements which are to be provided uh, this is also nowadays uh, this kind of a wing wall is also going to be widely used and known as uh, uh, the uh, what we can say the uh, reinforced earth wall so uh, here as the height of the wall uh, will be increasing the thickness of the well uh, wall uh, uh, more thickness of the wall is required at the bottom so this thickness can be reduced by providing the reinforcement uh, in the earth and whatever lateral forces are there due to this earth can be uh, resisted by the uh, reinforcement and so that the thickness of uh, this wall is a very less so very thin walls are to be uh, put it uh, uh, and it will be uh, functioning very well so reinforced earth wall is also another innovations uh, and uh, i think on many uh, bridges uh, such kind of uh, walls are to be provided uh, uh, on the embankment part right so this is uh, another uh, innovations and in the foundations again uh, very common three types of the foundations open fine foundation pile foundation and well foundations out of which uh, the uh, pile and the well foundations are in the category of a deep foundations whereas uh, open foundations that is a shallow foundations depends on the safe bearing capacities which are available on the site one can decide either the open foundations or the uh, deep foundations 
the foundations are most of the time uh, um, there will be there and in which uh, nowadays i think the mechanizations are available so pile foundation is more suitable um, because uh, 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 it gave it uh, there is a less time uh, for the construction of this pile foundation whereas in the well foundation more time is required so that is why unless and until the pile foundation is not found to be suitable we can go for a well foundation otherwise uh, most of the time the pile foundations are used so these are some of the pictures of the well foundations pile foundations uh, you might have seen now we come to this uh, earthquake part in the earthquake part uh, uh, as i have told you that uh, i took the three uh, different earthquake uh, 1995 kobe earthquake 2001 buj earthquake and 2008 china earthquake let us see one by one all the three earthquake and see what kind of uh, failures that is to be observed uh, for the bridges so that give uh, that gives us a uh, important lessons to make uh, a earthquake resistant bridges so uh, let us see uh, the first pre uh, earthquake 1995 kobe earthquake it is a great hansin earthquake of kobe occurred on january 17 1995 at uh, uh, 546 uh, uh, that is a uh, japan standard times in the southern part of the hyogo japan known as a hansin it measured 6.9 on the moment magnitude scale and 7 on the japan meteorological agency sindo intensity scale um, that tremors uh, actually lasted for approximately 20 seconds and the focus was uh, somewhat 17 km beneath the epicenter on the north end of the azai and 20 km away from the city so these are uh, the prescription of the 1995 kobe earthquake but let us see the failures which are observed in this kobe earthquake this is the nishinomiya ko earthquake bridge um, basically uh, you can see the uh, bridge uh, that remains intact right but uh, the span uh, is collapsed span was uh, uh, fold down from its uh, uh, sitting places so this is uh, we found a very common type of a failure in most of the bridges and that you may uh, see that here a very small sitting width are to be provided just to accommodate uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, bridge right to support so that is why this is a very common uh, kind of a failure you observed in majority of the bridges that if you are not providing this sitting width properly then there is a possibility because this is a tram or the or during the earthquake the shaking will take place and during the shaking if uh, um, i think the support of sufficient sitting width is not available and naturally it is going to collapse <laughs> right now you can see that this was uh, the uh, just approach uh, approaching to this central uh, portion a uh, approach span would be there uh, to the central portion and once this uh, uh, part is to be collapsed i think the entire uh, traffic is going to stuck off right so this cannot be useful so this is one of the uh, <coughs> uh, failure that is observed in kobe <coughs> another uh, uh, very large um, i think um, uh, large scale uh, the uh, Uh, the failure is observed in, during the 1995 kobe earthquake and this is the collapse of a fucky viaduct it was a 18 span of uh, 22 meter each 18 span of 22 meter each with the psc deck simply supported at both the ends right see though it was a 18 span it was a simply supported bridge all the span is a simply supported the reinforced concrete columns were 9.9 meter to 12.5 meter tall height of these columns are ranging from 9.9 to 12.4 with the diameter of 3 3.1 to 3.3 meter and this viaduct was designed in accordance with 1964 design specification right of course it was designed for the earthquake considering a 0.2 horizontal and 0.1 vertical acceleration coefficient see the point 2 horizontal and point 1 vertical acceleration coefficient of course it was designed uh, very uh, in the very early stage uh, that is a 1964 so it's okay but uh, today uh, if you can see this point 2 and point 1 uh, acceleration coefficients are found to be very very less 
right? And this is, uh, uh, of course, a lesson for us that uh, there is a need of revising this thing and it was, it was uh, revised later on. So very less amount of uh, earthquake accelerations considered in the horizontal and the vertical direction. And that will basically uh, 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 failed uh, on this uh, fucky wire duct. And you can see that entire, I think uh, all the columns uh, these were uh, uh, failed, right? The entire bridge superstructures were, was intact, but uh, see the kind of failure that is to be there. The entire column is crushed, right? And uh, this is nothing but uh, premature shear failure of the reinforced concrete column. So uh, this is, uh, I think the entire column is crushed from this uh, potential zone of uh, plastic hinges, top and bottom. It is a potential zone of plastic hinges and uh, uh, it, it was collapsed. <clears throat> so if you can see here, then uh, subjecting, uh, subjecting to a strong ground motion, uh, the columns suffered the extensive flexural and the diagonal crack at 2.5 meter above the footing. Here, this is the point of a potential uh, plastic hinges which is going to develop where the one third uh, of the longitudinal bars were terminated, right? With the insufficient development length. And since the amount of tie bars were insufficient, wherever we are going for splicing the reinforcement, there is a need of putting a closed tie there, right? So at that time, uh, uh, there was no, not a knowledge of such kind of a things. And uh, because of this region, there is a premature shear failures that is to be occurred. So this is the analysis of uh, this, uh, uh, failure of the bridges and that gives a lot of lessons to us that this is the point of a premature, uh, this is a, uh, the top and bottom of the column is a point of uh, the potential uh, plastic hinges uh, uh, that is going to develop at this power place. And so that we need to take care uh, a more and we need to provide a more closer spacing of the stirrups there uh, so that uh, uh, the well, confinement uh, will be observed and we get the higher strength. Right? So uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, concern and later on uh, it will be rectified in the uh, new codes. Again, uh, failure of the ta Takasio wire duct. This is the Takasio wire duct. You can see that uh, 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 the entire thing, uh, it is collapsed. So this was uh, the thing and here the shear failure is going to take place. And because of this shear failure, the bra uh, the span uh, is collapsed. So this is also the place uh, the shear uh, failure is going to take place. Uh, how to control the shear failures? That is a matter to see in the, by the designer. <coughs> then after uh, this is uh, another uh, 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 wide uh, portion, and uh, in this wide uh, portion also the bulging, of course, it was a uh, buckling of the wave and the flange plates. It was a steel bridge, but uh, this will give us an idea that uh, which are the potential uh, position of the uh, plastic hinge formations where we need to take care. Otherwise, the buckling uh, of the uh, steel column is, go, uh, is taken place here. So same thing would also happen to a RCC uh, column. It was a suspension bridge more flexible in the nature. When we are going for such kind of a flexible suspension bridges, we need to take care of uh, the transverse deformation. And see here that uh, this transverse deformation of somewhat about 1.3 to 1.4 meter is going to take place. Uh, so there is a permanent offset that we found in the foundation uh, during the 1990 uh, Aka uh, Kobe earthquake for this Akasi Strait Bridge. So entire thing, uh, the entire, uh, what we can say the foundation was shifted to a 1.3 to 1.4 meter and there's a permanent offset uh, is found in the foundation. Uh, then we go to a Bhuj earthquake. Uh, Bhuj earthquake, I think many of us are known to us. It was on the 26th January. Uh, the uh, peoples were just, uh, 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 prepared ready for uh, celebration of the 51st Republic Day. And in the morning at 8.46 a.m., uh, the Bhuj earthquake uh, occurred. It was of magnitude 7.7 .7 
and uh, it was uh, uh, remain uh, uh, for about two minutes, uh, quite large. Uh, uh, that is uh, the things, nearly two minutes are there, and uh, large amount of uh, casualty take place. Nearly uh, twenty thousand people died, and more than one lakh fifty thousand people injured. And uh, as we know, it was its epicenter was nine kilometers southwest of the village uh, Chobari in Bajau Taluka, right? So this uh, event. Uh, 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 has uh, given a lot of lessons to us to make the earthquake resistant bridges and what uh, uh, what were the defect uh, these are uh, there on the bridges that we can see first we can start with uh, the uh, connecting link of uh, saurashtra to kutch that is a old suraj suraj bade bridge uh, there are two bridges one is known as a old suraj bade bridge and another is a new suraj bade bridge it is a balanced cantilever kind of a multi span uh, highway bridge is and of course it was a very old bridge but uh, we found here the longitudinal movement you can see that uh, there is a longitudinal movement in the bridges so quite uh, large amount of uh, long, uh, horizontal acceleration observed and because of that uh, longitudinal movement uh, uh, between the superstructures and the pier is found uh, Bearings, of course, it is the first place to suffer. Like uh, the machinery is the first place to suffer in a building. Here, bearings are the first place to suffer in the bridges. And that is why after uh, a major earthquake, always there is a need to change uh, or replace the majority of the bearings. So uh, this is the first place to uh, uh, suffer because uh, uh, based on that, uh, uh, because it, uh, or uh, what we can say, so, uh, uh, transfer the majority of the energy. So that is why the, uh, the bearings uh, are always going to damage. And when it is a um, elastomeric bearing, large amount of shear deformations are found. And then after it will going beyond the in inelastic stage, so which is not able to recoverable. So it is a irrecoverable uh, deformations are found, lateral deformations are found. And so that uh, after the major earthquake, there is a need to replace the bearing. So the uh, damage bearings are there. This is the failure of inspan hinges. Of course, in a uh, balanced cantilever, the construction methods where such kind of the hinges are provided. So failure of a inspan uh, hinges would be there. New Suraj Badi bridge, very near to the, uh, adjacent to the old Suraj Badi bridge. The new Suraj Badi bridge is to be made. Of course, it is to be made with many earthquake resistant features and that will save the new Suraj Badi bridge so that you can see. This is also one of the very, uh, we can say that whatever experiments which we have made in the things uh, during the earthquake, uh, uh, it is proved or not. So see here, of course, the elastomeric bearings were severely uh, damaged, severe strains are there, of course, uh, which can be replaced afterward. So there is no much questions, but you can see that large amount of transverse deformations found uh, in the elastic deformation, which is beyond the inelastic stage. So soffit because of the ponding here, vertical accelerations, uh, uh, because of these vertical accelerations, the ponding is going to take place and uh, the soffit of the girders are <coughs> there. Very important uh, feature is the uh, seismic stoppers. In the earlier, the size, such kind of a mechanism, such kind of a, uh, features uh, were not introduced in majority of the bridges, but in the new Suraj Badi bridges, the stoppers were introduced. And you can see that the stoppers plays a very effective role during the earthquake. It is failed, but it saved the bridges, right? So this is basically the important features in the earthquake resistant design, which needs to be incorporated such kind of a seismic stoppers needs to be placed and it is to be designed for the more forces. It is to be designed so that it remains el elastic. So it is to be designed for more forces so that it can sustain more force and uh, uh, it save the bridges. So otherwise uh, uh, this uh, span uh, would uh, uh, have a transverse deformations and it may fall from the support. But uh, because of these uh, stoppers, uh, uh, you can see that the bridge remains as it is. Of course, stoppers failed, but it can be later on repaired or re uh, replaced. 
but uh, you can see it saved the bridges. Another important thing is uh, the epoxy coated bars. Of course, uh, corrosion is the problem and that is why people have found a solutions to use the epoxy coated bars. But see the epoxy coated bars uh, during this such kind of a sh shaking, uh, it shows a poor, because of a poor bond between the epoxy coated bars and the adjoining concrete. So the entire, what we can say, uh, this cover part is to be uh, spun off. So here uh, we need to take care of uh, the bond between the epoxy coated bar and the concrete so that uh, there would be a good bond and the concrete can function well. So this is found, uh, uh, um, uh, this is a weakness which is found of a epoxy coated bar, which uh, needs to be strengthened in the coming days. Transverse displacement, of course, uh, horizontal accelerations are there. So uh, there may be a longitudinal deformation, there may be a transverse deformations. And you can see here that uh, <laughs> transverse uh, displacement of the decks are there. How to prevent that we need to take care. Ponding between the two adjacent span, so here uh, uh, ponding is taken place. So that uh, is to be there. Failure of the cross beam. I uh, see many times uh, we have such kind of uh, uh, systems when there is a, <coughs> a large span on one side and smaller span on the other side, the pier caps are having such kind of, a, or there is a different kind of superstructures. Here there is a large span. So maybe a box girder kind of a superstructure is placed. And here there is a small span. So only a slab kind of superstructure is placed. So just to maintain uh, uh, the uh, same top level, uh, see here the uh, cap uh, having a different kind of uh, the depth. So when such kind of a, uh, uh, what we can say the options or alternatives are to be used, we need to careful. Otherwise uh, here uh, the failure is going to take place. Approach is the first place if it is not being properly, even in a regular, if we are not regularly maintaining the bridge, then also such kind of a approach uh, is going to fail. So during the earthquake, it is naturally the uh, place of failure. Uh, in the frames, uh, kind of a, uh, frame structures, uh, we found such kind of a joints, maybe due to a flexure or the shear cracks, grounds are also going to fail. So uh, these are the different things. <coughs> Arch is um, found uh, very, uh, what we can say, poor uh, in the earthquake bridges. So uh, most of the time in the uh, earthquake prone region, uh, such kind of uh, machinery arch bridges are not to be uh, allowed. Uh, naturally, these are the expansion joint. This is also found because of the poor maintenance. Many times we found on the bridges, uh, there is a poor maintenance. And because of this maintenance, these are also the troubles arised. So this is related to a, a second earthquake and the third earthquake, China, 2008. So in China, uh, um, we have, uh, China uh, has made a remarkable uh, uh, progress as far as uh, the uh, uh, bridges are concerned. And uh, uh, these are the, Basically, China earthquake to, uh, 2008. Wenchuan, it is also known as a Wenchuan earthquake occurred in the Sichuan province of China. Uh, and uh, on May 12, 2018, and uh, on the Chinese earthquake agency, it was a magnitude 8.0, 7.9 by U U United States Geological Survey. And it kills uh, somewhat about 70,000 people. So, uh, major, you can see this China major observations. Uh, now, based on this past two earthquake, I think uh, you can recall some of the, uh, uh, that is observation, that is uh, insufficient intensity of the design forces. Earlier, a natural that we don't have uh, much knowledge of this earthquake. And because of that, it was designed for the lesser amount of accelerations. So same thing word was also to be there. Uh, it is observed that insufficient intensity of the uh, design seismic force. Inadequate structural detailing for uh, enhancing uh, the ductility. So ductility is uh, the important thing and uh, structural detailing, uh, that is a important parameter to achieve the ductility. So if it is not being done, then the thing is, because of this ductility, 
we can cope or we can sustain the uh, extensive or the large amount of inel inelastic deformation before it is going to fail. And hence, the ductile designing is the essential part. Now, of course, the code uh, uh, is also there. IS 13920 is there, uh, which gives uh, many provisions for uh, making the ductile structures. And the third and very important thing is absence of the unsitting prevention devices. Uh, we have seen in the Kobe earthquake that very less amount of sitting widths are provided. So providing a enough uh, seat length, connecting, uh, so these are the uh, uh, prevention of unsitting devices. Uh, the span was intact and it is going to collapse. So providing a enough uh, seat length, uh, uh, connecting the deck and the substructures, connecting uh, adjacent uh, uh, deck and uh, strengthening the anchor bolt of the uh, bearings. These are some of the prevention uh, uh, devices are to be there. And such unsitting prevention devices were first developed in Japan after 1964 Niigata earthquake, and it is effectively implemented worldwide. So these are some of the unsitting prevention devices are there, which needs to be incorporated into a, a bridges so that the spans are not going to collapse. Otherwise, we have seen in the Kobe earthquake, the spans were intact and it was collapsed from the sitting width. So this we need to ensure in the designing for providing such kind of unsitting prevention devices to be incorporated into the design. So this is uh, the China 2001 Miao Zoping bridges. It was a, a 1400 uh, uh, meter uh, long, uh, consists of the three span continuous C. It was a three span continuous priestess box girder. The main structure is 450 meter long, three span continu uh, continuous pre-stress concrete bridge. Uh, uh, and uh, see uh, that uh, it is a pre-stress concrete bridge, but see because of the uh, less sitting width, it was collapsed, right? So bearing at the sides, uh, you can see the bearings at the sides where uh, here found a very less sitting width and that is to be there. Uh, you can also see a large transverse deformations so uh, these uh, transverse deformations, residual, residual drift between the two adjacent girders in the transverse direction that is observed. Vertical offset, you can also see here a vertical offset uh, uh, because uh, uh, many times uh, vertical, uh, uh, we are designing for the lateral forces, lateral accelerations we consider, but vertical accelerations are not accounted in the design. So if the vertical, if the bridges are uh, very near to the epicenter or epicentral distance. So there is a possibility of vertical accelerations and vertical offsets are found. Failure of the side block. So it is a, a reaction block, such kind of a reaction blocks just to prevent uh, the girders uh, from its sitting positions. So severely damage uh, 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 girder bearings and see the bearings, each layers are separated here, right? So uh, you can see the massive earthquake which, uh, which was going to take place and see here the layers, the steel and the rubber layers, uh, each were separated uh, in the earthquake. Behua bridge, 500 meter long PC, a priestess concrete bridge, four span continuous. See very long bridge is there, four span continuous is there. And these are the PR, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. So these are all the spans were fold on the ground, you can see. So because of the lace sitting width, uh, again, you can see the deck displacement. Here you found the deck displacement. Here see the uh, uh, lateral beams are there. So cross beams are there. This was also collapse, right? So these are the uh, damage of P6 and P7 pier. And see here, the thing is uh, all uh, were just uh, uh, adjusted one over the another. So very sheer, uh, sheer failures or flexure failures, failures are to be observed here. Zia Dong Bridge, uh, 187 meter, 12 meter wide, four span. And again, you can see that it is collapsed from the central point. Because of the less uh, layer sitting, will, uh, we can get here the failure. Uh, this is a Hulin Bridge. Uh, it is an interchange of uh, uh, main bridge and four chord bridges. Many times on the highway, we provide such kind of a interchange, right? 
So you can see that uh, um, uh, yeah, severely damaged. This is a potential point of the plastic inch. Here also uh, the thing is there, the shear failures are observed. So if we see the major thing, so here the thing is that uh, there is an omission of the seismic design provisions and the detailing. Let us see some of the points which we are summarized. So the first point is there is a omission of the seismic design provisions in the detailing. Missing restrainer, restrainers are also missing. Shallow foundations, of course, uh, depends on uh, the things, but if there is a deep foundations, uh, uh, then it would be good. But uh, here, majority of the shallow foundation. Lack of continuity and the integrity. This is, uh, again, most of the time, the bridges are simply supported in the natures. But if you go for continuity, it would be a redundant structure. So there would be a redundancy in the structures. And this redundant redundancy helps in uh, just uh, uh, reducing the collapse. More the RCC type of superstructures. So it was of a lower grade. Lower grade of concrete and steels are used. So uh, there is a very heavy load. And uh, for that, uh, the grade of the concrete and steels are also important thing. Poor bond due to the epoxy coated bars. So epoxy coated, of course, uh, it is good for the corrosion resistance, but bond is a matter of questions. And when we are using a epoxy coated reinforcement, how to improve this uh, bond that we need to understand. Elastomeric bearing, of course, uh, uh, it is uh, found poor. So this is also see that nowadays, I think pot PTFE kind of a bearings are used in all the earthquake uh, prone uh, bridge areas and the bridges. So uh, majority of the bridges, of course, uh, there, there is a less uh, availability at that time and the less seismic awareness. This is the important thing. As the earthquake, num a number of earthquake increases, the awareness would also increases. And uh, day by day, uh, the, the, our codes are also going to evolve with more and more features to make the safe uh, and stable structures. <laughs> if we see the seismic effect on the bridges, these are uh, the major, uh, the, it creates an inertia force, uh, dynamic earth pressure, earth pressure, hydrodynamic pressure, and liquefaction, and the lateral spreading of the soil. These are the four major effects. And out of that, the first one, inertia force, and the liquefaction, first and last, contributes the most significantly to the damages during the strong earthquake shaking. Uh, so inertia force to reduce the mass, to reduce the inertia. And uh, second is the liquefaction on which uh, the support, uh, the soil on which the foundation is resting. So during huge earthquake also, the large amount of areas are found to be uh, under the liquefactions. So soil behaves like a liquid and, a liquid, a liquid and uh, the foundations, um, uh, there is a settlement uh, to be found in the foundations. And because of that, the failures are to be there. Right. So the first and the last uh, uh, contributes most significantly to the damages during the strong earthquake seeking. Let us found, uh, understand the difference between the building and bridges so that uh, this will give us a more idea. It has the less redundancy and the reserve strength. Our buildings are most of the time more redundant structures. Frame structures are there. Frame structures are having a more redundancy, whereas the bridges, most of the time, it is a simply supported bridges. Nowadays, of course, the continuity is started. So continuity of one span, or two span, or three span. Uh, I think we cannot go beyond two to three span continuity because um, later on, uh, the uh, what we can say, the secondary forces are also increases. So uh, there is a less redundancy and the reserve strength. Uh, in the building, there are many non-structural elements are there, which would also help us in resisting the earthquake forces or uh, liberating the uh, earthquake energy. You can see the brick wall. Brick wall, uh, uh, the energies uh, are to be, uh, after the earthquake, majority of the brick walls are getting the cross uh, uh, failures, right? The uh, diagonal failures are to be found. And this is the way the energy is also released. Uh, just a minute, I will just, my uh, uh, computer is discharged. Uh, 
Hello. So there are many non-structural components in the buildings, whereas uh, such kind of a non-structural components are not available. Uh, so that is why uh, the thing is there. Different component of bridges having different uh, pore strength and ductility. See, uh, ductility, where to put it or where to provide it. So there is only one place, uh, uh, this is a vertical element column where one can take care. So uh, we need to have a different component having different over strength and ductility. No ductility and over strength at the connections of the superstructure and substructures. Failure at just one or two connections can put the entire bridge out of the functions. So this is a very important part. And that is why the bridges needs to be designed for much larger seismic coefficient uh, than the building. So that is why whatever uh, earthquake coefficients pre uh, prescribed uh, for the building, this cannot be used and it should be even more than that, right? Current Indian codes, uh, of course, IS 1893 part one that is for the building, part three that is arrived for the bridges. But most of the time uh, we use a IRC because uh, IRC code Indian Railroad Congress for the highway bridges and IRS for Indian railway. So for railway bridges, their own codes are there. For road bridges, the, their own codes are there. So that is why IRC codes are uh, normally used. Of course, majority of the IS provisions are kept in the IRC. And uh, recently, IRC uh, 112 code of practice uh, for design of concrete bridges are, uh, this is arrived. And uh, uh, it covers both the concrete as well as uh, the pre-stress concrete. Uh, both uh, features are to be incorporated uh, in IRC 1126 and the limit state philosophy is also adopted in the design of bridges. Before that, um, uh, uh, it was a uh, elastic theory uh, was used, but now IRC 112 has prescribed to use the limit state philosophy in the design of bridges. So code is revised and now uh, limit state philosophy is also incorporated into the design of bridges. Let us see some of the provision of uh, IRC 6 for seismic design of the bridges. Uh, as you see, uh, the earthquake duration, uh, it is the, the same as we use in IS 1893. But uh, the thing to be noticed is more than 60 percentage area are under moderate to high seismic risk, right? So you can see that uh, the zone 4 and 5, zone 3, 4 and 5, so more than 60% of the areas are there that will be uh, under moderate to high risk. So these are the three zones, zone three, four, and five. Zone one is now merged into zone two. So very less areas are there, blue area uh, that is a zone two, whereas rest other areas are zone three, four, and five. So more than 60% areas are under moderate to high seismic risk. Gujarat, if we uh, talk about then all the three zones are there, zone three, four, and five. So depends on the situations, we need to go for the earthquake design. All the bridges supported on pier, pier, pier band, and arches directly or through the bearing are designed for horizontal and vertical seismic forces, except, except culvert and minor bridges up to 10 meters span in all seismic zone. And here the relaxation is given Right? And um, uh, for bridges in seismic zone two and three, satisfying both the limits, if the length of the bridge is 60, less than 60 meter, and individual span is less than 15 meter, then this has been avoided where the earthquake forces need not to be considered. Otherwise, for rest, all the cases, there is a need to consider the horizontal and vertical seismic forces, right? Special investigation should be carried out for, you know, these are the special cases and that is why here the special investigation needs to be carried out for bridges more than 150 meters span. If the large span is the long span, long bridges, long span bridges is there, then we need to go for a special investigation. The bridges with pyre taller than 30 meter in zone four and five. When height of the uh, pier or abutment is more than 30 meter, then we need to go for special investigation. Cable supported bridges, arc bridges having more than 50 meter span, bridge having special uh, seismic resistant features <coughs> if it is being provided. 
bridges having innovative structural arrangements are made and bridges located within the near field region then one has to go for a special investigation whatever codal provisions given that is uh, not sufficient and one has to go for a special investigation near field region is defined as the area covered within the 10 km from the non active fault right one has to see that if the bridges which is constructed is in the area within the 10 km from the non active fault then it is known as a near field region and where the special investigations are required what is a special investigation includes so which needs a site specific spectra independency of component motion special variation of excitation soil structure interaction suitable method of structural analysis characteristics and reliability of seismic isolation and other seismic resistant bridge features so this needs to be covered under the special investigations which is required to be carried out masonry and plain concrete arch bridge arch bridges with span more than 10 meter shall be avoided in zone 4 and 5 and in the near field region right so masonry and plain concrete bridges of more than 10 meter span we need to co consider the component of seismic motion two horizontal component uh, that is a longitudinal and the lateral longitudinal direction is considered that is along the uh, vehicle direction or along the span is known as a longitudinal direction across the span is known as a transverse direction so two horizontal component Uh, that is uh, along the longitudinal and along the transverse and one vertical component needs to be accounted in the seismic design vertical component shall be considered in zone 4 and 5 for all elements of the bridges see as for zone and 4 and 5 vertical acceleration also to be considered vertical component may be omitted in all the element in zone 2 and 3 except so in zone 2 and 3 also you need to consider vertical component particularly for the pre stress bridges bearings and the linkage horizontal cantilever structural elements stability check and bridges located in the near field so even in zone 2 and 3 you need to account a vertical component for in such cases right you need to go for a combination rules so this combination rules uh, as per is 1893 130 30 so 100% you considered in the pre uh, in the design direction and 30 percentage in other uh, two directions so two horizontal component and one vertical component so 100 30 percent rules uh, consider 130% so when i am considering uh, the moment in x direction so 30% moment uh, of z directions are also uh, need to be considered so these are the design moment 130% to be considered seismic for response uh, there are two methods seismic acceleration method and the response spectrum method uh, as a response spectrum method that is suitable for complex structural systems like continuous bridges the bridges with large difference of pier height when there is a difference of pier that is always there uh, curved bridges in which the dynamic dynamic analysis shall be performed and this is very similar kind of the formula which is prescribed by is 1893 so design horizontal seismic coefficient can be uh, determined by z by 2 sa by g and r by i and as it is uh, r is a response reduction factor i is a importance factor sa by g is a average acceleration coefficient and seismic forces can be determined by horizontal acceleration ah times the seismic weight and the seismic weight is known as a dead load plus appropriate amount of live load so same kind of a design spectrum which is prescribed by is 1893 is to be used for different type of the damp uh, damping and different type of the soil condition so we can use a fundamental natural period by using uh, either the rational method of analysis and a simplified method that is for the regular case the time period can be determined by using such formula uh, and in which d is the appropriate dead load plus appropriate amount of live load and f is a flexibility coefficient horizontal force required to apply for unit deformation seismic provision uh, seismic force due to live load 
shall not be considered when it is acting in the direction of the traffic. In longitudinal direction, there is no need to consider seismic force due to the live load, but in the transverse direction, perpendicular direction, uh, the seismic force need to be considered for 20% of the live load, in excluding impact. In zone three, four and five, foundation of the bridges on the loose soil and poorly graded sands with no fine shall be, shall be avoided, avoided unless appropriate method of compaction or stabilizations are adopted. Right? Use of unreinforced machinery or concrete arches shall be avoided in zone five. Part of the substructures embedded in the soil shall not be considered to produce any seismic forces. Mandatory provision in zone four and five, reaction block or seismic arrester. So this reaction block and seismic arrester shall be provided and designed for twice the seismic forces to prevent the dislodgement of the superstructure. This is one of the very common type of a failure observed. Uh, so that is why you can see the reaction block continuous. So whenever uh, the things are there, uh, you can go, suppose continuous uh, things are there, three, three span continuity is there. So you can provide here the restraint and uh, uh, free in the longitudinal direction. Whereas in the transverse direction, it is restrained from both the sides. Uh, here longitudinal direction, the free, uh, uh, it is allowed for, for freedom. Otherwise the secondary stresses are to be developed. So just to avoid the secondary stresses, the longitudinal displacements are allowed. So here it is free in the longitudinal direction. Whereas in the transverse direction, it is not allowed. And accordingly, you can go for providing such kind of a, rear, um, a reaction block. So particularly for peer cap P2, uh, for peer P2, uh, right, you can uh, provide because it is a restraint from both the side in longitudinal as well as transverse direction. So you can provide such kind of a restraints in uh, longitudinal and transverse direction, whereas you can provide restraints only in transverse direction. So this is a half plan of the peer cap. So that is why such kind of a reaction blocks are required to be provided. And see from three dimension, it is look like this, such kind of the reaction blocks are uh, provided, right? So enough sitting width, IRC, PRN abutment cap shall be generously dimensioned to prevent the dislodgement of the superstructures and what uh, the sitting widths are to be provided, that criteria is also given. Use of ductile detailing as per IS 13920 or as per the specialized literature for the bridges in zone four and five to improve its performance. It is uh, essential to go for. IRC has also recommended a use of uh, special uh, seismic device such as a shock transmission units, base isolation, seismic fuse, lead plug to mitigate the effect of the seismic forces. Continuous superstructures or integral bridges are preferred, right? Elastomeric bearings needs to be arrested in both the direction uh, in longitudinal as well as transverse direction so that uh, the uh, superstructures will not collapse. These are some of the good practice for the earthquake resistant design of the bridges just to avoid the irregular configuration and uniform distribution of stiffness is better. Avoid unstable or the weak soil site. Multi-span continuous superstructure is preferable. It is better to have a more than one support to carry the inertia force. When we go for a multi-span continuous superstructures, it is better to carry the inertia force by more than one support. It will not, because many times what things are there, only one support is kept fixed and others are kept free. So that is why the inertia force will be transferred to only one support and remaining supports are free. Using rubber bearing, isolation bearing, uh, uh, or more uh, than one fixed bearing. Better to use a pot PTFE bearing rather than a steel bearing or the things are there. And if possible, reduce the inertia force by the base isolation. So see uh, the plastic hinge, these are the potential uh, place of the uh, plastic hinge. So where uh, we need to take care so that here the plastic hinge formations will not be take place. So these are the places. So well-designed structures, uh, well-designed uh, structures dissipate the seismic energy by inelastic deformation in the localized zone of the selected member. So this thing needs to be taken care. Ductility, ductile behavior is ensured by confinement of the concrete, right? So by confining the concrete, we can uh, get, so here you can see that proper confinement can be observed or uh, provided 
and particularly at this place, the closer spacing of the transverse reinforcement needs to be provided. So we can get a confinement and through which the capacity will be there. Superstructures, dislogment, prevention devices needs to be provided. So provide reaction blocks or other type of seismic restrainers for preventing the dislogment of the superstructures at the pyre and abutment cap. Provide adequate support length for superstructures and design and construct the integral bridges whereby the superstructure and substructures can be made monolithic. This is one of the very important thing. And uh, in the uh, coming uh, or you know, in the last couple of years, people have started to go for preparing the integral, integral bridges so that uh, uh, the uh, collapse, uh, there is a chance of uh, uh, prevention of the superstructure from the substructures can be minimized. Right? So we can see such kind of uh, blisters that is to be provided, longitudinal uh, restrainer is provided, vertical uh, uh, and the pedestal are there. You can also go for providing such kind of the elastomeric uh, pad, bearing pad also just to uh, control and this is the reaction block. Right? So these kind of uh, devices needs to be provided. Uh, superstructure dislogement arrangement so pre prevention of the dislogement arrangement, various kind of a, a super, uh, super connection from superstructure to superstructure and superstructure to substructure, this kind of uh, arrangement needs to be provided. So such kind of a holding down bars are to be provided or linkage is provided. Sitting width, enough sitting widths are to, needs to be provided. And uh, see, this is a case of a flyover integral bridge concept of uh, Delhi Metro, right? Curved bridge 70 degrees Q is there and no bearings or no expansion joints on the pier and abutment. As I told you that it is already started uh, in the Delhi Metro. Uh, so expansion joint is only provided at the start and end in between no expansion joints are there. Uh, use of advanced technology like use of high damping rubber and lead rubber bearing can be used. So this can be used as a base isolations and uh, reducing the earthquake force. Shock transmission unit, it is also to be used at some of the places. So NHEI Ganga Bridge at Allahabad, uh, shock transmission units are to be provided. So this uh, is a one kilometer application of shock transmission unit to a one kilometer long bridge with expansion joint only at the abutment and the central pier. Expansion joint is provided only at the central pier and at the abutment. Right, wherein the seismic forces are transmitted on the three priors each uh, by the two halves of the structures. So such kind of a unit stock transmission units are already provided on the things. And uh, finally, I, I would like to show some of the construction technology also, but I think uh, our time is uh, here the constraint for me. So uh, uh, I can just uh, uh, ask to organizer if, uh, uh, two, uh, three minutes, uh, five minutes will be available. I can show these construction techniques. Otherwise, we'll complete the things. Uh, yes, sir. Two, three minutes we can take. So okay. Can, so yeah. I think this is one of the uh, uh, very, I think, uh, this kind of a span by a span construction technology nowadays it is adopted. So this is a beautiful video just to have the idea uh, that uh, uh, along with the design, Construction uh, uh, sequence also uh, 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 helpful in making the uh, earthquake resistant bridges. So such kind of uh, things, let us see uh, how uh, it would be there. Segment 
ไพโรดของ Trust ลงบน Special Rail Support และเลื่อน Rail Support ไปวางลงบน Segment เบอร์สาม Sir voice is coming but the video is not showing Okay I'll just Launch Trust then It is because uh, oh yeah. The proposed cable state bridge under construction now, across is it the electrified railway tracks at Bardwan. Is it visible? Screen is blank actually, sir. Screen is blank. Yeah. Now? Uh, not yet, sir. Not yet. Erection of first segment using erection crane. Is it visible? Yes or no, Dr. Tarak? Uh, sir, still the video is not visible. Okay. Yes, uh, you you need to screen the uh, share the new screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it? Uh, your presentation is there, sir. Presentation is there. Yeah. But the screen is not visible. Uh, you you. Uh, the proposed cable state bridge under construction across electrified railway tracks at Bardwan. Still the blank oh, screen. Okay. Is okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll just see whether it is available on the folder or yeah. not. If it is available in the folder, I will uh, show you from the folder. Yeah. So it can be open in VLC and uh, the oh, screen yeah. of VLC can be shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. I will just uh, scare, scare the, share the screen. Sure, sir. Sure. The proposed cable state bridge under construction. Okay, is it visible now? Screen? Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. So now I'm going to play the video. The proposed cable state bridge under construction across is it audible, visible? railway tracks at Pardwan. Yes, sir. Audible.
erection of first segment using erection crane. Components of second segment erection commenced with help of erection cream. Third and subsequent segments erected following the same sequence. The erection of the superstructure over electrified railway track is challenging and need utmost care from safety point of view. I think uh, uh, with this thing, I complete the thing, complete uh, from my side. Uh, uh, so uh, anybody have any question or anything we can discuss? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. We have a few questions in the box. I'll just one by, I will go through one by one. Yeah. Uh, what should be the maximum allowable displacement at rear top in seismic case? For buildings, we have a drip limit of uh, H by 250. Mm. Why not such value for bridges? No, actually, uh, see the uh, allowable dis displacements uh, are not to be there. But accordingly, uh, you can, while designing the bearings, uh, whatever bearings we are considering, so bearings shall be designed for such kind of a displacement. So mm. whatever design displacement we uh, uh, decide, based on that uh, the bearing shall be decided right so that accordingly uh, such displacement uh, uh, would be taken care uh, so when the uh, uh, displacement uh, uh, during the earthquake would be more than uh, uh, this design displacement then it creates a problem otherwise it is well within the limit there is no problem and right? so displacement shall be taken care 
in the bearing design whatever mm. displacement you decide or do you design mm. of course there is some permissible limit which is prescribed in irc at present i am not worried i am not knowing about that thing but uh, this displacement shall be taken care uh, in the bearing design and accordingly bearing shall be designed right sir uh, the next question that we have uh, for dynamic analysis of bridge uh, should weight of the superstructure be considered as lump mass or continuum model um see again uh, both the theories are acceptable uh, if you go for lumped mass uh, uh, it would be a little bit of simpler and continuous mass it is little bit of complex right mm. so how you are expert uh, to handle such kind of a complexities based mm. on that uh, you uh, consider the method of analysis both are uh, uh, acceptable and it won't give uh, a major variation mm. unless and until there is a variation in the mass and stiffness mm. right so lumped mass model is also quite acceptable and the uh, uh, results are uh, acceptable to a designer right uh, so next question uh, which method is suitable for seismic analysis of bridges Uh, static or dynamic see it is already prescribed in the code depends on the span and all the things right yeah prescribed in the code whether you go for a seismic coefficient method so for a lower span or in a zone zone is also a met, uh, whether zone 3 4 5 is are there so everything is prescribed in is as well as irc so accordingly one has to follow i have also covered the same thing in my presentation that mm. when you have to go for a seismic coefficient method when you have to go for a response spectrum method mm. so that is already prescribed in irc mm. particularly for a longer span you need to go mm. for a dynamic analysis mm. right for a shorter span and zone mm. so mm. both the aspects are there span length and zone based mm. on this thing the method of analysis Uh, is prescribed in IS uh, as well as IRS, IRC. Right. Uh, so, do we have any con consideration of the seismic zone while deciding configuration of the bridge? Uh, cannot understand. What is the uh, uh, what you mean to say? Bridge configuration. Uh, what kind of bridge? That type of bridge that we are deciding. See, most uh, of the time in configuration, uh, yeah. it is not like a building. right here the uh, configuration means uh, uh, what is the span that you are going to put it span is the major thing hmm. because many times uh, when you are uh, going for the uniform span hmm. uh, there are many constraints available for placing the uniform span hmm. right so that is why uh, the span is a major criteria for deciding the configurations hmm. and once the span is decided accordingly you can think of uh, deciding the type of superstructures then the next thing is to decide the type of the superstructures mm. uh, so what kind of whether it is a, a some, uh, it is a simple uh, i think slab type superstructures or slab or beam type uh, whether it is a box type whether it is a psc so all these things are uh, ultimately related with the span mm. right what is the span you are going to put it and i have also given in my presentation certain criteria as are already uh, defined by the various people so designer researchers so mm. based on that you can uh, go for deciding the type of superstructures mm. next is uh, will the bearings become obsolete in near future because of uh, in yeah, yeah, superstructure yeah, yeah. even elastomeric bearing needs to be replaced after 15 to 20 years or mm. even major earthquake would be there then mm. also you need to replace the elastomeric bearing right mm. so there are certain tests available to check the function of the bearing so mm. timely uh, is at uh, time to time uh, the engineers needs to uh, go for such kind of a routine checking because the function of the bearing is a very important thing for the function mm. of the bridges right mm. so such kind of certain tests are available people are doing even such kind of routine check maintenance and uh, accordingly uh, they can decide whether the bearings uh, needs uh, to be replaced or not Yeah. if the elastomeric bearings are there as i told you after 15 20 years it needs to be replaced yes uh, and in that case in near future uh, due to this integral superstructure do, uh, do you feel that the bearing will obsolete naturally yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, see again there are many issues as far as the integral uh, bridges are there 
still uh, um, uh, many designers uh, many people are struggling for providing the integrated bridges many issues are there mm. so unless we get uh, enough uh, what we can say the knowledge for designing the bridges mm. integral bridges uh, we need to uh, go uh, for a, a traditional continuous traditional mm. systems mm. right yeah uh, sir, uh, which is the reliable software for seismic analysis of bridges uh many softwares are there midas are quite midas is quite popular and uh, it covers also the wide varieties of the bridges mm. wide variety means uh, as i told you very long span bridges uh, with all the different construction uh, method like a free cantilever methods uh, is there or cable stay bridges are there or segmental construction because nowadays segmental constructions are widely used mm. so segmental constructions are there because when we are going for such kind of a construction Uh, then you need to go for a construction stage analysis yes mm -hmm. and you need to have a good software mm -hmm. or even time dependent forces are also uh, uh, here it is a remarkable mm -hmm. so uh, you need to consider all such cases mm -hmm. i think uh, midas are widely used in uh, india and i have also uh, used midas so i am quite satisfied of using the midas uh, mm -hmm. particularly for the design of bridges right Uh, sir, in CSI software, uh, it yeah. uh, provides option for uh, fixed bearing and free bearing. Mm. Right. What is the difference in between these two, fixed and so free? Fixed bearing? and uh, free bearing are as good as uh, uh, like a fixed supports. Uh, we uh, do not allow the uh, uh, displacement. But mm. here, the meaning of fixed means we do not allow mm. deformations. We allowed rotation. Rotations are there. Rotation is allowing. whereas in a free bearing we allow displacements uh, in both the direction or in a particular directions mm. right so it is known as a guided bearing if mm. we allow a displacement in a particular direction it is known as a guided bearing maybe mm. in transverse direction maybe in longitudinal directions so there we can use a guided bearing so mm. here the selection of the bearing choice of the bearing that mm. is also playing a very very important role in the design of the bridges and based on that uh, uh, the lateral forces are going to transferred on the structures or basically a substructure because ultimately the loads of the superstructure a very heavy mass inertia is to be there at the top of the pier or abutment which is going to transfer so that is why this uh, type of bearing which you are going to provide is a very important thing a uh, more important design uh, considerations so fixed bearing means uh, there is no displacement in any direction displacement mm. is restrained rotation is allowed remember mm. right whereas free bearing means the displacements are free so it may be in both the direction or it may be in specific direction so accordingly when you are modeling uh, such kind of a bridges in your uh, computer software you need to play with uh, displacement restraints and the rotational restraints and you can prescribe accordingly right uh the next question is irc does not consider mass of pier in seismic analysis yeah. whereas uh, rdso does consider 80% mass of the pier to be acting at the top uh, which is more uh, correct approach <laughs> see as it is in a building also we consider the mass of the column 50% half of the column below the uh, uh, joint and half of the column above the joint and that mass we consider to be lumped at a joint mm. so this can be also or done in case of a bridges right? right up till now many people mass of the columns are not considered because it is a vertical elements mm. so where the stiffness is uh, important mass is uh, very less in comparison to the mass of the slab mm. so mass which is resting uh, at the top in comparison to the mass of the column is a very less so that is why many times it is neglected so even if you neglect it is not uh, wrong and if you consider it is more uh, precise right sir yeah. and sir which is the good book for uh, seismic analysis of bridge uh seismic engineering uh, i'll just uh, um, uh, one minute uh, there are a uh, good book available for uh, the seismic uh, analysis of the bridges Uh, just a minute i had a uh, uh, some of this thing in my uh, actually uh, uh, 
there is a uh, uh, author chen uh, and uh, lian dune uh, bridge engineering many books are there uh, by chen w f chen uh, and lian dune on the bridge engineering uh, and uh, uh, there is also uh, a uh, uh, three four different volumes are available where yeah. one of the volume is related to the seismic design right so okay. uh, i can just uh, show you the front page uh, i will just share the front page this is one of the uh, very good book uh, if uh, some of you are interested uh, for uh, seismic design i will just share my screen uh, so that uh, you can see oh. and uh, this might uh, if some of you are interested uh, it's a uh, good is it visible yes sir okay so this is one of the good book uh, by wai fei wai chen and lian dun right mm. many books are available on uh, bridge engineering uh, but uh, this is related to a seismic design mm. right so uh, you can use it even some of the good indian authors are also available but uh, it may be uh, for bridge designing may not be specifically for a seismic yes. designing mm. right so raj gopalan and other good uh, author have uh, written a books uh, uh, on design of bridges or the uh, pristis concrete because mm. the pristis concretes are widely used uh, in uh, design bridges mm. so this may be used uh, but specifically for seismic design this is good book mm. uh, so one more question has pop up uh, what will be the proper position of longitudinal girder below the wheel or adjacent below the wheel or adjacent i cannot understand uh, because see longitudinal girders uh, are to be decided numbers numbers of longitudinal girders are to be decided based on how many numbers of lanes are to be accommodated right yeah. normal 2.5 to 3 per 3 meter spacing uh, of the girder is uh, suitable so considering the number of lanes suppose i want to accommodate two lane uh, or three lane or four lane bridges accordingly the width of the bridges will be decided and uh, this width of the bridges will be divided by uh, 2.5 to 3 meter spacing of the longitudinal girder you can decide the number of longitudinal girders right so this way this is the way you can decide the number of girder longitudinal girders yeah <sighs> so so i think almost all the questions that we have covered which are there in the box yeah uh, so uh, so thank you very much uh, for <laughs> yeah. providing your uh, time for having this session so uh, with this we end the session with your permission yeah yeah thank you thank you yeah. dr tarak thank you yeah. dr ankur thank uh, you sir uh, we, i think uh, uh, we can meet uh, Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, this Corona pandemic is going on. Yes. But, uh, yes. Uh, this uh, uh, this is the way I think. This is the only shoot uh, ways which is available to us to meet us. Right. right? Yes. So it um, was very nice uh, of you, sir, for sparing your valued time and uh, giving us a so nice uh, presentation session and uh, interactive session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to yes, all the participants always. too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.